Good morning. We gather here to remember with thanksgiving the life of Joan Portis. As you know, Joan passed away uh, in November, so a lot of the grieving is past, and now we can look at her life with thanksgiving. And I will talk about it uh, in, during the service, but Joan was someone who was very organized, and 99.9% .9 of this service was created by Joan. So as you hear it, the scripture, the hymns, the stories, be assured that uh, Brian gave me all the information that Joan wanted. And just a little advertisement to give you folks haven't already uh, filled out a Five Wishes brochure. It gives you an opportunity to think about how you would like to be remembered. So, as I said, we are gathered here to remember with Thanksgiving the life of Joan Cordes, who is wife of Brian Cordes and mother of Rick and Ron Harrell. Joan also leaves behind her two brothers and four grandchildren, other family members and many friends. We gather here today in the church that Joan loved, in the church where Joan and Brian met. And I'll speak more about that later. Let us pray. Holy God, whose ways are not our ways and whose thoughts are not our thoughts, Grant that your Holy Spirit may intercede for us with sighs too deep for human words. Heal our wounded hearts made heavy by our sorrow. Through the veil of our tears and the silence of our emptiness, assure us again that ear is not heard, nor eye seen, nor human imagined and visioned what you have prepared for those who love you. Amen. Our first hymn is Holy, Holy, Holy in the Black hymnal in the pew, uh, the New Century hymnal number 251. Please stand and sing. And we'll be doing the first two verses.
Amazing Grace will be in the Red Pilgrim Hymnal. Please be seated. All four of the pieces of scripture are meant to remind us of Joan. Brian picked out the scripture in the hymns he knew that Joan would want. I know that she loved Psalm number 121 because she told me when I first visited her in 2017. The 121st Psalm is from the Old Testament and everything else will be from the New Testament. Here now the words from the 121st Psalm. I lift up my eyes to the hills from where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade and your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this day on and forevermore. The next reading is from the New Testament. It is from Romans chapter 8. And in it we hear that nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing you say, nothing you don't say, nothing you do, nothing you don't do. Nothing can separate you from the, love, from the love of God. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The last two pieces of scripture are from the Gospel of John, and gospel means good news. In the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 25 and 26, it says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. The final piece of scripture is from the Gospel of John, chapter 14. Hear the words of the Gospel writer. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I tell you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to me so that where I am, you may be also. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. I have said these things to you while I'm still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave you, peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our God is still speaking. Joan was born to John and Flora Burns on June 28, 1950. She was born in Springfield, Mass, and Joan had three brothers, Richard, Thomas, and Michael. In high school, Joan worked for the phone company, and in 1968, Joan graduated from the High School of Commerce in Springfield. In that same year, Joan married Richard Barrow, and soon had sons, Richard Jr. and Ronald. Joan worked at the Howard Johnson on the turnpike in Blanford, in 1980, Joan went to work at the Barnard Rest Home. That started Joan's career trajectory into patient care. In 1981, Joan started to work at Pathlight as part of the residential staff. For more than two decades, Joan went on to become a program manager and then a trainer for both staff 
and individuals. Joan was extremely organized, and she had amazing historical knowledge. While at Pathlight, Joan worked as a recruitment specialist and a human rights officer for the Springfield and Greenfield offices. During her time at Pathlight, graduate, she graduated with a degree in developmental disabilities technology from the Holyoke Community College and a bachelor's degree from Westfield State. In 1997, Joan won the Community Living Award for Advancing Dignified Community Living. That was for the people she was serving at Pathlight. At Pathlight, Joan excelled at anything which dealt with organizing data. She tracked and reported on the status of staff training certificates. In fact, Joan set up operational and organizational systems which are still in use today. Joan even designed the educational booklet with a spiral wind so it would lay flat and it would be easier to read. Joan's life wasn't all about work. Joan and Brian had gotten married in 1982. As I said earlier, they had met at UCC Second Congregational Church. But when they were about to get married, Reverend Fisher suddenly passed away. And so Reverend Peacock from First Congregational Church stepped up and offered to have them married at First Church in the chapel. Joan and Brian were a team. Joan's friends became Brian's friends, and together they enjoyed the Red Sox, the Patriots, the Bruins, the Olympics, and college football. When Joan was attending Holyoke Community College, one of her professors had season tickets to the Boston College football. Joan would catch the game and talk to the professor about the game afterwards. Joan spent her time with her cousin Betty and Joan's friend Cheryl. In fact, since Cheryl was a single parent, Joan and Brian offered to take Cheryl's son Trevor for an occasional weekend. Joan had another friend, Rosemary. Rosemary's parents and sisters worked the athletic concession stands, so Joan and Brian would go to watch the games, the Springfield Indians hockey, and then walk around and visit Rosemary's family before the game started. Joan and Brian were also friends with Michelle and Ron. Uh, Joan and Brian would stay at Michelle and Ron's house, go to the Bruins game in the evening, stay overnight with Michelle and Ron, and then go to a Celtics game the next afternoon. When Michelle and Ron moved to Illinois, Joan and Brian drove to Illinois, and all four of them went to see the Chicago Red Sox, uh, Chicago White Sox play the Boston Red Sox. Joan got along well with Brian's family, playing the game of pitch, Joan and Brian's mother against Brian and Brian's father. Joan loved playing Trivial Pursuit and had an almost encyclopedic memory. There were lots of evenings spent with Brian's brother Philip and Philip's wife Jane, always with lots of laughs. One of the highlights of Joan's life was becoming a grandmother in 2003. The joys came when Nathaniel was born. Then came Charlotte, and finally, Zachary. They loved playing with their Hess trucks, and Charlotte liked decorating cupcakes and cookies. There were times at Stanley Park, and there were times when everyone was dancing to songs at their house. As the grandkids got older, Joan set up games for everyone to play on the holidays, birthdays, and Mother's Day. Joan had a special relationship with Kyle, Rick and Lori's son. I mentioned Christmas games. Excuse me. Uh, perspiration is making it difficult to read. I mentioned Christmas games. Joan and Ryan would make a half dozen or a dozen different cookies at Christmas. Joan would make cheesecakes. One year, she had to make two cheesecakes because the first one disappeared. Brian, you don't happen to know what happened to the cheesecake, do you? Ah, okay, he ratted you out. 
Joan and Brian loved camping with Rick and Ron. Joan and Brian also camped at Niagara Falls, Toronto, and Montreal. They camped on their way to Florida to visit Tom, Peg, Joan's father, and Lynn. On one of their camping trips, they stopped in Washington, D.C. and took a two-hour tour of the National Cathedral. The Joan I knew loved crafts. She did quilling, which is ribbon art. I'm sure that all of you have received cards with the quilled ribbon. She did watercolor and needlepoint, cross stitch, knitting and crocheting. Joan made hats, mittens, sweaters, and afghans. Joan sewed quilts and made wall hangings, place maps, pillowcases, and masks. Best of all, Joan made cards. Whenever I would go visit Joan and Brian, I'd receive a handmade card within a day or two. In fact, when we did Joan's service, graveside service in November, I put my favorite card that she had sent me with the urn to be buried. I must have over a dozen of those cards. They're too pretty to ever throw out. Joan's legacy will live on through all of you. There are quilts and cards that will remind you of Joan. Joan loved sewing and knitting, crocheting and needlepoint, but even more than any of that, Joan loved giving her creations to the people she loved. Brian will now come forward and read a poem entitled, Don't Cry For Me. Don't cry for me. I'll be okay. Heaven is my home now. And this is where I stay. Don't cry for me. I'm where I belong. I want you to be happy and stay strong. Don't cry for me. It's just my time. But I will see you someday on the other side. Don't cry for me. I'm not alone. The angels are with me, walking me home. Don't cry for me. I have no fear. All my pain is gone. And Jesus took my tears. Don't cry for me. This is not the end. I'll be waiting for you here when, when we meet again. So remember me in your heart. Remember my smile. If you think of me, I will never be gone. Now the next hymn is Amazing Grace, and I have been told that that is in the Black Hymnal, number 547. You may stand if you like, and we'll be doing verses 1, 2, and 5.
Joan's impact won't be diminished. Keep your memories of Joan with you, and Joan will stay with you. Joan was a strong woman. Joan was a resilient woman. Joan loved her husband, her sons, and her grandchildren. That's the legacy we can only hope to leave when it's our time to die. Please be with me in a spirit of prayer. We thank you, God, that for Joan and Cordis, all sickness and pain have ended, and death itself is past. Joan has entered the home where all your people gather in peace. Keep us in communion with your faithful people in every time and place. We now entrust your servant, Joan and Cordis, to your merciful care. We do this in the faith of Christ Jesus, who died and rose again to save us and is now alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit in glory forever. Now let us pray for our own needs. Merciful God, support us all the day long of this life full of trouble until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your tender mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at last through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God of grace and God of glory in the red hymnal number 366. And we'll be doing the first two verses. And once again, you may rise if you wish.
rest back in November. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Joan M. Portis. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a daughter of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the company of the saints in life. Let us pray. Beloved God, in whom all things are possible, grant mercy to all members of Joan's family and to all of Joan's friends. Comfort them with the hope that one day we will be reunited with our loved ones and with, with you when we too emerge from this cocoon and begin our journey home. Gracious God, bring comfort and peace to each person here today. As we now depart and go to our respective homes, stay with us, bless us, and help us to be worthy of the legacy Joan Cordes has left behind. Amen. Now please read the common commission as found in the bulletin. Let us go forth in peace, being of good courage, holding fast to that which is good, rendering to no one evil for evil, strengthening the faint-hearted, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, honoring all persons, loving and serving the Lord, and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now hear the benediction. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Let us go forth now in memory of Joan Cordes and in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.